Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a brand review of Hada Labo. So quite a few of you have asked me to review Asian skincare brands, and while I do have a lot of Asian sunscreen reviews up already, I haven't done any just skincare aside from sunscreen. I mean, obviously sunscreen is skincare, but other skincare products I haven't dove into yet until now. So I am here to review quite a few different products for you guys from Hada Labo. Of course, I did research all of the ingredients. I've tested these out and you can watch me apply them to my face and I will share my thoughts. So if you wanna hear if these Hada Labo skincare products are worth it, worth the purchase, worth the hype. You're in the right spot, let's jump right into it. All right, let's start right off with their oil cleanser. So this is infused with hyaluronic acid and olive oil and is supposed to be a gentle yet effective way to remove impurities, even waterproof makeup from the skin. We'll talk about that in a sec. It also is free from fragrance and essential oils. So actually all of the products in this video are fragrance free, no synthetic added fragrance, no essential oils, no fragrant plant extracts, nothing that you need to be concerned about there if you are looking for fragrance free skincare products. So aside from the olive oil, which is a really nice emollient that's going to help to soften and smooth the skin, this does have a couple other emollients that are really nice sources of fatty acids that can help to replenish the skin as well. So jojoba seed oil is one of those and the other is something called triethyl hexanoin, which is actually a combination of glycerin and fatty acids. And of course, because this is an oil cleanser, it's not just going to be filled with oils that soften and smooth the skin, but it does have a variety of cleansing agents in it. And all of those agents are actually really nice ingredients for cleansing because they're mild yet effective. So there shouldn't be anything in this that's too harsh on the skin. One of those surfactants that I did like to see in this formulation is something called PEG20 glycerol trisosterate, which is an example of one of the primary cleansing agents in this formulation that's mild yet effective. It's not too harsh. It's something that can be easily removed from the face without leaving your skin looking or feeling greasy. So a really nice surfactant to have in this formulation. And aside from the olive oil and then of course the cleansing piece, this does have some hydrators in it as well. So it has two different forms of hyaluronic acid and both of those are just going to help to hydrate the upper layers of our skin one is called sodium acetylated hyaluronate and that's actually better than just hyaluronic acid itself in a skincare product like this because it has a better consistency and it also hydrates the skin for longer the one downside of this product is that it has an ingredient called ethyl hexyl palmitate in it which is just a texture enhancer it is a nice emollient but it's something that is known to potentially be an issue for those of you that are acne prone because it may cause clogged pores, it may contribute to the formation of a breakout. It is something that is known to be more comedogenic than other texture enhancers and emollients. Thankfully, it's the only ingredient in this cleanser that can be linked to breakouts and clogged pores. Obviously, there could be other things in this that just don't agree with your skin. But it's not like this is filled with a bunch of ingredients that are known to be pore clogging. There's just the one. So it's really going to be up to you if that is worth the risk or not. It's not going to be something that I reach for on a daily basis. I don't use oil cleansers anymore in my skincare routine actually, but I was really curious to try this one because I know that it's something that a lot of people love. So I think this does have some really nice ingredients. Does the addition of ethyl hexyl palmitate mean that this is a bad product? Absolutely not. That ingredient may not be an issue for you at all, and this may work really well for your skin, but it's going to be up to your skin and how it responds to this cleanser. The consistency of this oil cleanser cleanser is nice. It's definitely not the lightest weight oil cleanser that I've ever tried, but it's also not super greasy. So I would say it kind of falls in the middle. It does feel nice on the skin. Of course, it's incredibly soft and smooth because it has those oils in it. It does feel a tiny bit greasy, but it's nothing bad. I think it's something a lot of people would like. So this is more so something that I would recommend for those of you that are extremely dry to normal as a first step in your double cleanse routine. If you're extremely acne prone or very oily, you definitely can still use it and can still try it. Just proceed with caution. You may not love it. And while it does feel slightly greasy because it's something that you rinse off, 
it's not something that leaves an extremely oily residue on the skin after that so that's good as well this is not you know something that is like a serum that you're gonna leave on all day that's going to make your skin look super greasy in and of itself but you just may not love the feel of that if you have oily skin and while this definitely does remove sunscreen for me I personally choose to not use oil cleansers for makeup removal because if I'm wearing makeup like this foundation powder I want to use something that is really going to get rid of that makeup first before I go in with my cleanser so I don't want to use a cleanser for makeup removal because I want my skin to reap the benefits of the cleanser and not my makeup, which I have said before. So I prefer to use a micellar water. The Garnier Fragrance Free Micellar Water is my absolute favorite. I prefer to do that first and then go in with a secondary cleanser that is water-based to remove remaining impurities. So of course, CeraVe is one of my favorite. Vanna Cream is another favorite. I just don't love this for that purpose, but if you're just using it for something like sunscreen, I do think it's totally effective in doing that. That's what I was doing in that application clip. It does remove sunscreen well, and I think you can rely on this in place of something like a micellar water, especially if you're very dry. I feel like you would love it. Next, let's move on to their Hyaluronic Acid Face Wash. So they say that this is a mild foaming cleanser that helps to remove dirt and excess sebum while also replenishing the skin and hydrating it with hyaluronic acid. The forms of hyaluronic acid in this face wash are the exact same as this cleansing oil. And then on top of that, this does have glycerin in it, which is going to help to hydrate the skin further. And same kind of thing goes here for the cleansing agents in this face wash. So there are a few different cleansing agents that are mild yet effective they shouldn't be harsh on the skin stripping or drying but there also is one potential issue ingredient called lauric acid that's an ingredient that also is known to potentially be comedogenic and trigger or worsen breakouts or contribute to pores being clogged but on the flip side it can also be something that helps to moisturize replenish and soften the skin so same exact kind of thing here. I'm not going to repeat myself too much. Totally up to you if that is worth the risk or not. It's not going to be an issue for everybody, but if you're super acne prone, proceed with caution. But I do have to say, when I first tested this out, I really, really liked the formulation. And this is something that I like to reach for when my skin is feeling dehydrated slash a little bit irritated from face masks, which is almost every day lately it feels like. So I think this is another really awesome option if you're very dry to normal, something you may not love if you're oily, but I have combo skin that leans oily and I thought it felt really, really nice. Again, keep in mind, anything that we're rinsing off the skin is going to be a little bit different than something that we leave on the skin all day. So is a really rich moisturizing cleanser that you leave on the skin for a few seconds before rinsing it off going to have the same effects on your skin as a rich moisturizing moisturizer that you leave on all day slash all night? No. So this could be something that you incorporate into your routine if you have combination skin. So maybe you have a moisturizer that's very lightweight, but you want some extra hydration temporarily from a cleanser. You may love a duo like that. So that's just an option. I do think it's a good one. It's unfortunate that in both of these, we have an ingredient that's known to potentially trigger breakouts. Oh my gosh, dropping every day. But as always, I'm never trying to demonize or single out one specific ingredient and make you think you need to avoid a product at all costs because of one ingredient. Just trying to present what I find to you guys because I know that a lot of you are acne prone and I am too. So I would wanna know that before I purchase something. Next, we have their Hyaluronic Acid Hydrating Milk. This is just supposed to be something to add additional hydration into your skincare routine. Something you would wanna use after serums, but before thicker creams and moisturizers. It's kind of a lightweight lotiony consistency, which we'll talk about in a second. So this is gonna be like your little potent hydrator. For those of you that feel like you really need that added hydration, your skin is maybe looking lackluster or dull or just not as alive as you want it to, something like this can really help you to achieve that healthy, glowing, supple looking skin if that's what you're going for, which who's not, right? So this does have glycerin and caprylic triglycerides, which are really nice hydrators that we see in a lot of other products. The standout here is that this does just have a variety of different forms of hyaluronic acid at different molecular weights. So when something has a lower molecular weight, it's able to penetrate more deeply than something that has a higher molecular weight meaning it can help to hydrate deeper levels of the skin than just the upper layers. Still, the primary purpose is to hydrate those surface layers of the skin, but it does have a few different forms of that hyaluronic acid, so it's not 
just the very top layer. And then the last ingredient worth mentioning here is squalane. That's another really nice, rich emollient to help to soften and smooth the skin. It also moisturizes the skin. That is something that also may be a potential issue for acne prone individuals, but not in the same way as those other two ingredients that are definitely known to be more comedogenic than others. So the thing about squalane is it's actually the saturated form of an unsaturated ingredient called squalene. Squalene is something that is naturally occurring and present in the sebum on our skin and excess sebum is one of the contributing factors to acne. So if you're acne prone, you don't wanna to continue to add more products on the skin that have ingredients that are already present in sebum because that may worsen the issue for you. But squalene is not the same exact thing as squalane. Oh my gosh, I know that that can get really confusing, so just be aware. I've seen comments from people that say they know that squalene oils break them out, others that say it's great for them and they have acne, so do with that what you will. This does feel so nice on the skin. I love this formula. It's something that makes my skin just look so healthy and glowy. It's very hydrating, but it's not too thick. You know, it's not a moisturizing cream. It doesn't have those occlusive agents. It's also not the lightest weight lotion of all time. So it's not something that has a gel-like consistency that feels like it's barely there when you have it on. It's right in the middle. So if you're looking for something to help to hydrate the skin, make your skin look healthy, it's not too thick, it's not too thin, this is a really good option. Next is their emulsion, which is just another way to hydrate the skin. Emulsions are lighter weight than moisturizing creams, thicker than serums. Sometimes they are lighter weight than lotions, but I also have lotions that feel lighter weight than this. So it's basically just in between. And this also has glycerin in it and five different forms of hyaluronic acid, which just feels ridiculous to say. So some really nice hydrators. It has squalane as well. I would say the biggest differences are a couple ingredients in here that do have occlusive properties actually. So one of those is dimethicone, which is a form of silicone. That's an emollient ingredient with occlusive properties. It's very, very very nice and smooth. It really enhances the texture of a product. And the other is actually mineral oil. Mineral oil definitely has a bad rap as being a pore clogging and acne causing ingredient when it actually has not been proven to do that. It's a really nice moisturizing ingredient that helps to prevent moisture loss. It just might feel a little bit too thick and heavy for some. So that may be why you may not enjoy it but it shouldn't be something that's comedogenic. In this formulation, this is so lightweight and feels really nice. I don't think that would even be an issue, but it's something that's in this formulation, which does help to seal in that moisture. Aside from that, there's a couple nice skin conditioning ingredients in here. One is an antioxidant called arginine, and the other is a skin protecting ingredient called elantoin. So I feel like this one has the most going on and that it's not really just glycerin and hyaluronic acid as the standout ingredients. Yes, they're in here, but we have a few other things as well that I do like to see in a hydrating product. And for me, this one actually does feel lighter weight than the hydrating milk ever so slightly. They're honestly so similar. I don't think you need both. They serve a very similar purpose, if not the same purpose in a skincare routine. So I think it's just going to depend which ingredient label you prefer. I would say this one is just slightly thicker, but honestly, they're so, so similar. I could hardly tell a difference. I was really trying to <laughs> sit there and feel both, and I was like, eh, they feel pretty much the same to me. So I really enjoy them both. I think they both feel amazing on the skin. You can't really go wrong if you're looking for this kind of product between the two. I'll leave that up to you. Second to last, we have their premium lotion, which has a really similar product description to this emulsion. We just have some differences when it comes to the ingredient label. Just like the emulsion, this also has five forms of hyaluronic acid as well as glycerin to hydrate the skin. It does have something called diglycerin towards the top, which is just a larger molecular weight form of glycerin. It doesn't penetrate the skin as deeply, but it does help to hydrate the skin for longer amounts of time. And then the other standout ingredient in this that's towards the top of the label is something called urea that is a really nice skin replenishing restoring ingredient i was a little bit confused because on YesStyle's website this called out that it has urea in it and i went back and looked and i could not find urea in the ingredient list here in the emulsion but it was present in this lotion so i'm not sure if they just need to update their product title or if something was missing 
But if it's true that this doesn't have urea and this does, I would say that that's definitely the standout ingredient here because otherwise we just have a lot of repeats here and nothing really new. And the formulation of this one is unlike anything I've ever felt in a lotion before. At first I was really confused and thought that I had these mixed up. I did go back and like quadruple check. I thought this was the lotion because I feel like I'm accustomed to seeing products like this with that creamier consistency be marketed as a lotion, but in this case, this is the emulsion, this is the lotion, and while it may not kind of be what you're expecting in that sense, if you're used to something that is that thicker cream, it's not a bad thing here because this feels amazing. It's so nice. It kind of looks like something that may be a little bit greasy on the skin. Not at all. It's not greasy. It doesn't leave a tacky residue. It's not heavy. It's super lightweight yet hydrating and I rave all the time about products that have a gel-like consistency and if anything fits that product description it is this right here. It's like a true just slightly thicker gel that what am I doing? I don't know. I love it. I think it feels so so good you guys and this also makes my skin just look so healthy and so glowy. This is amazing. So if you have dry skin, this is definitely not going to be enough on its own to lock in that moisture for you long term, but you could use this underneath a moisturizer and be obsessed with it. I think you're gonna love this if you're oily. Like, oh, this is such a good product. Love. And finally, we have their moisturizing cream, which is yet another way to add moisture to the skin, but in a way that's going to be longer lasting than some of these other products. Consistent with the theme here. I'm sure you can guess exactly what I'm going to say. We have glycerin and say it with me five forms of hyaluronic acid to help to hydrate the skin. This also does have arginine. One of the standout ingredients here that you're not going to find in the other products is shea butter, which is a nice rich replenishing ingredient that has occlusive properties, something that's going to help to lock in that hydration long term. And aside from that, there's not really anything else worth mentioning. I start to feel like a broken record at the end of some of these these brand reviews because a lot of brands will choose to highlight a few noteworthy ingredients across multiple products within their collection. So that's definitely the case here. Hyaluronic acid is absolutely their superstar ingredient, if you will. So I'm feeling really repetitive, but that's just what we have going on. This is definitely one of the lightest weight moisturizing creams that I own. It's kind of similar to the Versed moisturizing cream. It's not super thick, it doesn't feel heavy on the skin, it's really, really nice. I do love the way that this feels. Keep in mind, I have combo skin that leans oily, so I feel like this is a perfect cream for those of you that do have normal to oily skin, but you're looking for something that has longer lasting moisture, so maybe as your PM moisturizer. If you have super dry skin, you could use this in the morning and maybe that would be the perfect level of hydration for you. For some, I don't know that it will be moisturizing enough. Again, it's really going to depend on how your skin responds. So it's definitely the thickest and creamiest out of all of the moisturizers that we've talked about so far. So I think this will be your best bet. However, it's definitely not the thickest moisturizing cream that I own. So while I love it, it's definitely not going to be for everybody. But then again, what skincare product is? So that's it for this review and my thoughts on these Hadalabo products. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I think we have some really nice options here. Across the board, the consistency is super nice for all of these products. We may have a couple iffy ingredients for those of you that are acne prone, but other than that, I love that there's no added fragrance, no essential oils, no other forms of irritants and or sensitizers. It's just a solid option that also doesn't break the bank, which is amazing. I forgot to mention I purchased all of these off of Yes Style. I will also look to see if they have these in stock on Amazon, and I will link everything in my description box below if you are interested in purchasing anything. I do receive a small commission if you decide to purchase through those links which helps to support my channel so that I can continue to purchase products to research and review for you guys so no pressure of course but much appreciated if you do you'll have to let me know your thoughts in the comments below are you interested in purchasing any of these products after watching this video do you already have some products from Hadalabo if so which ones and what are your thoughts we can chat there. If there's anything else that you would like to see from me next on this channel, leave that request in the comments below. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. And until then, I hope you have a great few days.